we're going to start out our trilogy here of uh, driving toys with the Mattel Driving School. Uh, I purchased this several years ago. It came in a very plain brown original box. Uh, it's by Mattel, I would say, in the late 50s. And it's pretty much complete uh, with the gas station, little gas station right here, three cars, um, a little garage, and a mountain to drive through, and various lanes. Um, there's a steering wheel that protrudes from a wooden shaft. Um, the structure of this is very interesting. This is almost like a sardine can, or an oyster can, or a ham can, one of those sort of things. It's completely sealed, metal. It's li richly lithographed on the top, as you can see here. The mountain feels like it's kind of a plasticky sort of material that houses are plastic. And here you can see the plastic wheel on the end of a uh, wood shaft. Um, you can both telescope and turn. Now, the way this is set up, it's almost like an Etch-a-Sketch X and Y axis control here. And that's controlling, uh, obviously, a magnet on an axis inside the unit, which controls the cars driving along. So even the instructions are a little misleading because left doesn't always mean left and right doesn't always mean right, depending on how the car is positioned. Sometimes turning involves uh, retracting or extending the steering wheel right here. So it's kind of an awkward sort of, it's almost a skill toy, but the way you move things around is not exactly uniform all the way through. It originally came with these little suction cups on the bottom to adhere to a kitchen table or whatever. Those are mostly dried out, so it really doesn't uh, adhere too well. Also, the steering wheel extends below the base here, so you really need to be on the edge of a table for this to work. So I kind of either use a heavy book or something to kind of put behind here and help brace it when you move it. So what you're supposed to do is each car, let me move this over here, each car is a car that came with the set. There's three, a, a red, yellow, and a blue, and they each have a magnet in the bottom. And you place it in the start location here. And then you're supposed to extend the wheel and turn it until the car moves. So we're going to do that. Let's try to get the magnet in. There you go. See that? Now to move, it's a combination of turning the wheel and extending and retracting the wheel. And I really don't want to break the unit. It seems like kind of a sensitive mechanism. So I just play with it very carefully. Or it does require an element of skill to kind of think of how you're going to move this thing. Here, I'm going to go through the gas drive through. Oops, stay off the lawn. And as you can see, it's a rather cumbersome affair. Oops. Here are the instructions printed right on it, kind of a nice litho of the dashboard and the wheel and rules for safe driving. A very cute little set ready for play on a rainy afternoon. And now for your enjoyment, we present the Matchbox Steer and Go. When we open up the box and take the main unit out, uh, we have the main console unit and then one of two countryside discs, if you will, or landscapes. And basically, here's the layout of the toy. You'll notice that this is supposedly the, like the fenders of, a, of an automobile, sort of, kind of. And you've got your dashboard right here. But this isn't like a normal dashboard toy. This is, a, this is a, uh, a, an actual game, actual skill game. And uh, so instead of everything being simulated, it actually works. 
and you've got a handbrake right here, you've got a gear shift lever, your start key right here. And this one right here uh, has the magnet on it. Here's a close-up of the end of the armature that is uh, affixed underneath the spinning board. And this magnet right here is what it attracts the underside of the car uh, to the board and basically moves it along or gives it the uh, impression of movement. At the top here, you'll see a little light. Uh, this was broken. I just recently fixed it. And this little light bulb here is like a twinkle light uh, of what you see uh, or what you have on your Christmas tree. And uh, I found, had an old uh, uh, a bag of twinkle lights and I found one that fit and uh, put it in there and also soldered in one of the loose wires. Do the position of the magnet uh, by shining through the board. And this actually moves with the steering wheel. So really, this toy simulates the movement of a car across the landscape, but it's not really moving. It's kind of being uh, held in place and moved side to side with the magnet. Well, how do they do that? Well, the neat thing about the Matchbox Steer and Go is that it used normal Matchbox cars. I'm using, this is a car from my childhood, actually. This is an MG sedan, which generally wasn't available in the U.S., at least not any great numbers, so I always thought it was neat. And, of course, I loved it because it had the trailer hitch on it, so you could hook a trailer on it. And it had the little corgi dog looking out the back window. Okay. Um, and what you basically did is you clipped a uh, magnet on the bottom of this with this wire assembly that came with it, clipped over the pin axles, and that little uh, magnet went in place. I had to figure all this out without instructions. It wasn't too difficult, but... How to just, I have a bag of parts and just kind of, kind of figure out how it works. So basically what you do is you take your landscape disc, which is kind of a blow molded thin plastic. You got to be careful because it, it can crack. And you put it down here, on here, and there's an alignment hole. You snap it down into place. And then it locks in place with one of these collars. Okay. And then this actually, uh, the landscape on this toy moves as opposed to the cars moving around a still landscape. So basically this control knob right here, you, you actually turn the ignition on and this control knob is reverse, first, second, a little noisy there on the second, and third. Okay, and you can see the platter actually moving. There's also a little uh, lap timer that goes around and around and around. Now, I haven't figured out how to reset this yet. It seems like you really can't. But it's a little timer that clicks off your individual laps. So basically, as I said, and the rest of the instruments are, are simulated decals, but they look nice. And you've got a nice 60s matchbox type steering wheel here. So basically, you turn on the ignition and put your car into gear. Watch closely, kids and you drive your car. And you gotta try to keep the car on the road as it makes its way across the landscape. Take the high road or the low road and then snap it around quick. What you don't wanna do is lose contact with that magnet and let the roadway drag you away. See, I got caught up on that ridge right there and the roadway dragged me away from the magnet. Now what you can do is you can also put in a reverse. See if you can back out of there, which I did not do. Well, let's see if we can not get back on there. There we go. Let's see if that'll work. There we go. We're back on the landscape, at least for now. Now we'll take the high road. Whoa! Can we stay on it without falling off? Yes, we can, and we do.
another interesting feature on this that I that I repaired. It wasn't working quite right, but I got it to working is this little brake right here. And this does actually slow down the uh, platter for moving. This is especially important when you're in the higher gears so that you can slow down going through certain curves. It takes a little care to modulate it just right so that you can uh, effectively brake. Chloe, she will kill you, Chloe. Okay, this is my third of three driving toy profiles. Uh, we took you through the Mattel version, the Matchbox version, and here is the Shopper version, which is called You Drive It. You may remember that Shopper brought us the You Fly It sets that I profiled in another episode. And uh, this particular toy has no relationship with, with that one at all. It wasn't the same inventor. I know the inventor of You Fly It. We profiled him on another, uh, another episode. You might have had a chance to see. If not, I recommend it. This toy is a little different because if we look at the, of the uh, Mattel version of the toy, it was basically a manual uh, XY axis uh, magnet underneath a metal surface. The Matchbox Steer and Go version had a rotating terrain and the magnetic wand underneath the terrain moved back and forth and the back and forth movement along with the rotating terrain gave the illusion that the car was driving along and provided the skill, the skill game. This particular version is almost a hybrid of the, of the two. The terrain stays in the same place. The magnetic wand underneath rotates around and it captures cars that are not matchbox cars or cars that have been modified there it's its own cars with wheels and magnets on it so uh, that's really the set and these are very similar to ones that we've seen in Sears catalogs and some other venues that the steering wheel may be a little different the decals may be a little different and what have you but there it's the same it's the same sort of uh, mechanism that that makes it work this one is interesting because if I zoom in here on this little component right here, you'll see that the speed is controlled by an accelerator that has a wire that connects to the floor. I like the kids' red, white, and blue shoes there that kind of pinpoints a set, I would say, right around the mid-70s. This is the base right here. As you can see, it's in very nice condition. As a matter of fact, um, the speedometer decals and the little instrument decals were never applied. There they are right there. Brand new. That's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know when I got this. I don't know if this had ever even been played with. I played with it a couple times when I first got it. I've got a bag of goodies here that include the uh, car keys, which fit right in here. And uh, there's a couple uh, little bridge overpasses that you can drive under. And most importantly, there's a couple of cars. 
And the cars, I said they had wheels before, but, but, but they don't. They're just little plastic cars with a magnet underneath and little nubs for wheels if you want to consider those wheels. And they give you two. They give you a yellow and a red. Okay? And here is your pedal assembly. And uh, here's the layout of the, of the console here. You, you do, do turn on the key to activate it. This is your shifter. It doesn't do anything except it's connected to a clicker. So I don't know why they even have that. Uh, the horn doesn't do anything. I mean, there's just, just a, a button, but it doesn't even push in really. Okay, how this basically works is you go ahead and turn your key on, and then you depress your pedal, and that makes the armature swing around. And you increase and decrease speed that way. So it's pretty clever. So the next thing you do is you go ahead and reach over here, pardon my reach, <laughs> and you'll notice you have a little surface here that is two-sided. You have kind of a, uh, a uh, suburban scene on this side and kind of a race scene on this side with a pit stop. And basically you go ahead and you clip it into the toy. And I very carefully do it. I don't like to wear on it too much. As you can see, I'm not a very good driver in you drive it land. Shopper made this very well, as you can see. I mean, it still operates fine today, the motors and everything. Um, the little chain armature that rolls back and forth underneath. And usually these rheostats in pedals or speed controls wear out the little coil, the little resistance coils. They get worn out or what have you, but this one's in really good shape and the modulation of speed is very clean, as you can see. We hope you've enjoyed this profile of Driving Skill Toys.